Welcome back to the game where Nathan makes the worst fucking word slip ever. Jesus. That was bad. Anyways, in the last episode, we're still trying to figure out who Yatsu is. I feel like that's the theme of this recording session. Okay. We know for a fact, and, and this, we know that this is a fact, even though it's not stated in red, that it has to be a she. And it has to be someone who died in Rokinjima. Do you want to know why? Because by Van Dyne's rules and by Knox's rules, even the... Okay, I've actually researched Van Dyne's rules. But I have a little bit of issues with it. A lot of Van Dyne's rules don't really make sense in the world of Yumaneko. But I'm still going to treat them as red text for now. But by Van Dyne's rules and by Knox's rules, Will is technically the detective in this world. Which means he cannot make... He cannot lie. He cannot take me for a ride and be like, Nope, I was just fucking with you the whole time. No. He is obligated... He is obligated to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. He is obligated to keep his mindset open to interpretation, but he is not allowed to flat out lie. He, if he makes a theory that is just a theory, he has to explicitly state it. And he explicitly, he explicitly stated a she. Because he explicitly stated a she, we know that all of the males in the game, every last well, you're a question bowl. Every last one of them, especially this guy because he's dead, cannot be the culprit. Because Will clearly stated she. Now, unless there's a new revelation about one of the characters that we haven't thought about, which has been brought up with this person. Oh, God. Oh god, no! It can be anyone. It can be a male or female now. Remember, there was a time in which, uh... In which Will asked Leon, which Leon is this world's version of Yatsu. The one where she was accepted and she never became the culprit of Rokinjima. In this world, she stated that she's had identity issues with being male and female. And she doesn't want to talk about it. Based on that, we can assume Yatsu, her other version of herself, can be either male or female. So, now I'm back to square one. Which means Butler, Natsui, and... Kinzo can't be the culprits based on the red truth and based upon not existing. Oh, Nate, you're taking one step forward and the moment you realize you fucked up, you take five steps back. Th thanks, Gap. She has a point. Anyways. Anyways. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm really trying. Because, like... Will said she. Are detectives allowed to make mistakes? Not intentionally. But, if a detective sees someone that he assumes is a girl, he is going to use the word she. But that person very well could be a boy. And so it actually ends up being a he. Which is why he asked whether or not Leon is a he or she. But based upon what Yatsu is seeing in her past... Well, actually, can we really trust what Yatsu is seeing? 
I feel like we can for now, but we're going to put a suspicious pin on this, because we're looking from the perspective of someone who is wanting to keep the illusion of the witch. I mean, this could be a confession, it could not be, honestly, but when you think about it, the only reason that we have to believe that Yatsu is actually a female, other than what Will said, is the fact that he, that she sleeps in the girl's door. Otherwise, I mean, unless this is some place in the world that allows co-ed sleeping, um, no, you wouldn't be sleeping next to Shannon or any of the Purgatory Sisters. Sanon, that, that's a nice name. Is that Satan? Sanon, Satan? <laughs> Thanks, Beatrice. Okay, I know this is just a vessel, and I know that I'm probably going to be shouted at about this, if not anything else I've stated in this Let's Play, but, uh, the vessel has a rack. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. That is, like, you know, now actually, hold on, hold on, let's see your full body sprite. Okay, now that I'm looking at you, you look too female, like intentionally female. Like super intentionally female. Cause that could be 07 just messing with me and saying, yeah, it's totally a female when in actuality it could be a male. Cause every cause he's There's been foreshadowing about this. There's been foreshadowing about uh, one of the, one of the, uh, two demons, Furfur and Zafar, one of them having, ba basically being a guy, having a penis. And then there's been, uh, sex identity issues with Leon, the other version. So... It's almost as if this person is identifying as female and going going with that. But remember, looks are subjective in the world of Rokinjima. That could be just 07 trying to make it seem like it's a female, when in actuality it could be a male. The clues have to be presented though. Knox's eighth, I believe. All clues must be presented. And I don't know which number of Van Dynes that is. The idea that one of these two, right here, one of them has a penis. It, it's kind of funny. Actually, funny enough, with Golden Fantasia released, uh, the blue one has a male voice. Like, a very deep male voice. I, I, thought, I thought both of them sounded female. And when I read that description, I was like, oh, I guess they prefer different things. They're a different kind of gender, a different kind of person. But no, no, evidently, no, they actually meant straight up one of them has a dick. And I'm like, okay. I'm glad 07 gave us the features to let us tell, because when you look at their fucking full body sprites, I mean, I don't see any package down there. I see package up there, and you know what? Demons can look like anything for all I care. 
Demons can shapeshift. This is this has to be the the culprit has to be the most either the most neutral yeah it really has to be the most neutral looking person someone who can swap between both genders to make it seem like it's either one or the other which makes me think it's not Shannon because I know it's hard to look at in this version you know with the sprites and everything and I know it's not exactly pronounced but in the PS3 version and especially the Steam version Holy shit! Shannon's rack is, like, comically big. Like, bigger than her head. To the point where the proportions are just impossible. Weirdly, oddly enough, oddly enough, based upon what real females have, Shannon in 07's original art that can barely draw fucking three fingers is actually more proportionate to her body size and thus makes the breast actually feasible when in the steam version and a little bit in the ps3 version they're just enlarged for the sake of being enlarged baller says they're big but come on there's a limit such dirty talk we're having I'm sorry, it's it's almost as hilarious as, as like fucking Chris Redfield from uh Resident Evil 5, the guy who's like super fucking buffed up and punches a fucking boulder. Oh my god, I'll never get over that. That is like the best thing ever, and like one of the worst Resi games ever. By the way, I don't know if you guys liked Resi 5. I hated Resi 5 for the sole fact that you only get nine spaces of inventory. Like, that is horrid. It works for survival horror, but not for Resi 5. Why? Guys, come on. <laughs> you shouldn't be so quick to judge. <laughs> Got it. You don't know that. Oh. Yes. Fuck all of you bitches. I have my fucking key. So, fuck all of you guys. After all, you literally, like, fucking attached it to yourself. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to remember. It, it was clearly stated that Yatsu was the killer, right? I mean, this is a vessel of Beatrice that is in the perspective of Yatsu, so I can only imagine so. Oh, your pride! <laughs> the pride is real! Please don't prank people other than me. No, don't worry about it, Shannon. <sighs> you know, I just noticed I feel better when I'm not trying to figure out the cul uh, culprit. So you know what? Fuck it. I know it's like very late in the recording session, like about five more minutes until the end of this episode, but... 
I'm not gonna try anymore. I'm just gonna watch. I'm just gonna listen to this tale, this confession. This confession. I am not a critical thinker. I am someone who likes to take things as they come. There are times when I do love to think. And I really do, do, think. It's my popular belief, I actually can think. And in this game, I've been thinking a lot. And a lot. And I'm trying to find the Cobra. I understand that. But... I think as George said it once... Too much work is slothful. Or something around that. He said... Yes. Missing the trees for the forest. Or looking at the trees for the forest or something. You're not getting the bigger picture. You're not, you're not enjoying the full thing. be nice to finally get a hold on who the culprit is. Maybe I should wait till the very bitter end, where I have all the clues. But according to 07, I've had all the clues. Since the end of chapter 4, according to Ryukishi 07, I technically had everything I needed. Wait a minute. Yeah, I did. What if I turn back the clock a bit on my thinking? I'm trying to think, what about Van Dyne's this or Knox's that, but remember, we didn't have that in the beginning of chapters 1 through 4. We only had the Decalogue of Knox, chapter 5 and onward, and we only had the commandments of Van Dyne, chapter 7 and onward. So... What if I ignore that? What if I ignore everything and reset everything to what it was back in Chapter 7? What if I take a step back and think about it from that perspective? And stop missing the forest for the trees? Think in a broad term. In that regard, literally anyone could have been the culprit. Whether or not we play by Van Dyne or Knox's rules doesn't matter because we didn't have that information back then. Yeah, Beatrice mentioned Van Dyne and mentioned Knox at one point, but even still. I think about it from that perspective, everything sort of changes. What do I know from the beginning of chapters 1 through 4? Well, in chapter 1, it was possible for Butler to actually be the culprit. So, I mean, we've come a long way since then. <laughs> Are you going to change out of your fucking clothes? Is, did, did 07 just not make pajamas for you? Are we all just going to be wearing our clothes now? Going to come south, the culprit has already appeared, but I don't have a clue who it is. It's you! Oh, you're reading that. I've noticed that 07's mentioned that book in both Higurashi and Yumaneko. It's almost like a crime happening on Rokunjima. No, don't spoil!
Shannon, don't be that type of person. Anyways, we're going to continue this lovely story in the next episode. So until then, guys, until then, I'll see you then.